Thank you for listening to Nomad's Movie Reviews Podcast, available on Podbean, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Amazon Music, and Stitcher. Also, please follow Matt's Movie Reviews on Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn, Reddit, Instagram, and MeWe. And of course, be sure to visit mattsmoviereviews.net for the latest reviews, top 10 lists, and more. Now, on to the show. The situation has become critical. The people of Egypt love him. We cannot take the risk of him becoming a patriarch. He consorts with harlots on the streets. He would give every cent away to beggars. There would be nothing left. His Holiness does not wish to see you. I don't believe that. I was sentenced without a trial. They are afraid there would be an uproar. You are more than qualified to be a preacher. But you are not a Greek citizen. There is a place that no one wants to go to. The island of Avia. Would you be willing to get a position there? Of course I would. You seem to be the real deal. No wonder they don't like you. Are you a true Christian? I try to be. You have a gift, my brother. People listen to you. You are the best possible person to guide our young men into priesthood. Not everyone is destined to become a priest. One cannot perform services here due to the condition of the chapel. The funds are simply not available. I'm happy to use my salary, and I'm sure that God will provide for the rest. My friends and I would like to become nuns. You have brought shame to the title of bishop. I know what you have been doing here with your so-called nuns. You hypocrite! He's sick. <laughs> Why are you doing this? Why don't you say something? I think your writings help people. You are meant to do great things. I'm starting to think that you're not human. You performed miracles. Hello and welcome to the Matt's Movie Reviews Podcast. I am your host, Matthew Perkovich, and this is episode number 434. Releasing June 2nd in select Australian cinemas is Man of God, a biopic that looks at the life and work of St. Nectarios of Aegina, a humble and righteous Orthodox priest who weathers a storm of persecution against him from forces within the church. A story and portrayal of one man's faith and humility while in the throes of an unjust persecution, Man of God also marks the latest film from writer and director Yelena Popovich, who I'm glad to say joins me now on the podcast. Yelena, I thank you so much for joining me. Well, thank you so much for having me. <laughs> my pleasure. So doing my research, as I want to do with, um, with my podcast, it's interesting the origins of this film um, in regards to yourself um, I, I read that back in 2012, you went back to Belgrade in Serbia uh, for your father's first year memorial of, of your father's death. And while you were there, you came across a book in a bookshop um, about um, St. Nectarios. Is that, uh, is that pretty much how this whole kind of uh, movie process kind of come about? Was it that moment with that book that kind of stirred your imagination and to want to dive deeper into this man's life and his faith? Yes, that, that's correct. I, 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 I've heard about him before um, on a couple of occasions, and, and, uh, uh, but I didn't know anything about his life. So when I was, uh, I was uh, at this uh, monastery that I went to the bookstore after the Mass, and uh, I, uh, I just usually go and see if there is an interesting book. I, I like reading about the saints myself. I find it very inspirational. Mm. But even though I never thought of making a film about a saint, I must be honest about it. I didn't think of something like that until I, I actually saw the book about him and I and I thought it would, it would I wanted to know more about him as I heard about him. And then when I when I read it on my way back to Los Angeles, I was I was really really moved on, on, on a very personal level. 
Uh, it could be a, a, a few reasons for that. Maybe one of the reasons uh, was the fact that my father, you know, it was fresh for me. He, I was there for his one year of his him passing away. I couldn't really come year before for his funeral. My my uh, immigration status in the U.S. wasn't finished, mm. so I couldn't, mm. um, you know, leave the country for I would not be able to go back. So um, it was, and I, I haven't seen him for ten years, and and it was obviously a very painful situation for me, and he was on my mind a lot. So um, and he was somebody. Uh, he wasn't a, a person who was going to church, but he was a very uh, honest and honorable man who was, uh, um, you know, he was, he was the, at the time it was Yugoslavia and uh, he was the top civil engineer in Yugoslavia. Um, you know, a lot of roads that were built, he was the one who was uh, uh, leading all that. And, and, uh, but you know, what happens when you're, when you're on, on a higher positions and, and uh, doing some, um, honorable work you know you 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 know he, he wasn't willing to do anything unethical uh to advance himself yes and yes. uh and you know he didn't want to join communist party that was another thing that they didn't like about him <laughs> so uh even though by by then it wasn't so bad but still it was it was on the list and and um uh, and he you know people around him they were they wanted to you know uh, you know, take everything that was coming to them, even though it wasn't ethical. Uh, they didn't like him, so they had to get rid of him somehow. Because it, just just because he's there trying to be honest and and doing things the right way, you know, it, it bothered those around. It just it, it kind of poked in their conscience. So they they um, they basically uh, one one day, you know, they he was building something in the northern part of of Yugoslavia. Um, and uh, it was it was this big highway, and and there was a lot of wind, and they asked him to send the workers really high up to wire something, and and he said that he was not going to do that, obviously, because the people's life was in danger, to to do something like that. He didn't want to be responsible. That was something they used to to take him to court as a so so some so what a disobedience so called right, and uh, then they brought uh, six false witnesses to. Um, say i don't know exactly what obviously it was all lies and slander and and he lost his job and and he ended up working in a, in a smaller factory after that he didn't really want to pursue any higher positions and and he was a humble man who who never really complained about he was really happy but a lot of people around him including in my family always always uh, criticized him for that and i grew up with that why didn't he sort of sell out and <laughs> and do things it doesn't have to be that righteous so-called right mm -hmm. and um, but I always admired him for that so so imagine like he had passed away I haven't seen him in 10 years and and all those things were in my mind right and and then I read the book about Saint Nectarius so I think that was a spark probably that's what uh, um, it, it was that and it would, there were other things because faith has played a, a huge part in my life you know I I, I pretty much lived on faith many times I left when I was very young, and and one of the reasons I left and went to U.S. was because my father was mistreated in the system in the community. So I felt that if I go somewhere else, I would I would maybe be able to to uh, do something without being constrained. Uh, and and so there were a lot of emotions there, and 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 I I because of this personal connection to the story of Saint Nectarius, uh, I felt that if given a chance uh, to do this film. I could um, make it very personal. I could put myself into it and therefore make the audience uh, feel for this man and 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 bring him closer to people's hearts. and that's that's how. And then, you know, it took a while, but actually it happened, which is which is, I can say a, a somewhat of a miraculous event nowadays. The thing that's really interesting about Man of God is that it's a movie about man who is slandered and accused. Um, but he stands up to that not through kind of any type of vengeance or revenge, but through humility and faith and prayer. Um, and it's really interesting film for our times. I think it's incredibly relevant because we are living in a time now where to be accused, where to be judged, where to be, you know, use the, the hip word of the day, cancelled. Um, mm -hmm. is a regular occurrence. Has, pe has has that ever occurred to you when watching this film? Is that something that people have brought up with you, the, the, just how 
relevant this film is in its themes, considering what is happening in the world, especially online, um, and how that kind of affects everything that, that happens uh, yeah. in our society. Actually, uh, people did bring it up. I mean, I didn't. I made it because obviously I was I was so close to the story, and I felt the story even back then when I thought of it, which was more than ten years ago. Mm-hmm. I felt that it was relevant uh, because of because of the suffering, unjust uh, slander, and because of all the injustice. And I felt that you know people that suffer, uh, you know, maybe it's going to help them to to continue. Uh, on on the right path on path of love and forgiveness, which is really the only way to peace. Um, and but again, now when we uh, as, if we speak today, what's happening, it definitely it connects to that as well. And and how do we you know deal with all this? Uh, I think in general, for a while, in my opinion, uh, not just now, but this was this was coming sort of what we were talking about. I think uh, in general, if I, if I remember the last 20 years, I mean, we, we, we don't have anymore this, this, this virtue called humility, mm-hmm. which, is, which is really important, I think, uh, especially if we want to find peace in our souls. <laughs> you know, you can't, you can't find peace without humility. And if we don't have a peace in our heart, there'll be no peace around us and there'll be no peace in this world. And, and sort of um, because that was sort of forgotten and it's taken as some kind of weakness. Uh, everybody seems to um, very quickly judge others, you know, for and blame everybody else for for what's wrong. And then uh, it extended to a point now, as you just mentioning, where people have become so self-righteous that they feel that even for the slightest uh, thing, such as disagreement uh, in a, in any matter, you know, they have right to even hurt others. You know, we've we've reached the point now that that that, that it's kind of uh, uh, we become so self righteous that we we just at this point think that if somebody just simply has a different opinion, uh, we have right to cancel them, ruin their life, and that's okay. Which obviously that's a terrible thing. Yes. Uh, and, and if this continues, uh, those that have perpetuated this will be the victims number one of it, and they're going to see it because the history will repeat itself. So uh, I hope that. Um, uh, we can um, somehow, okay, this film can help in a way uh, to to just give people number one hope and 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 show that the 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 strength of humility is is very important for our peace and and we and for our freedom. We talk about freedom a lot, right? We everybody wants to be free. I want to be free. Without freedom, life really doesn't have a meaning, right? But but what is what is a real freedom? I mean, if if uh, going through this life, you know, we're all going to find obstacles. We're all going to be <laughs> accused of something, prosecuted. And if we react to everything every single day, you know, imagine uh, if somebody says something nice about you, you're very happy. Then the moment they say something bad, whether it's true or not, you, you feel terrible. And and if we are so connected to what's happening outside of, of ourselves, we can never be free. And we can never find peace. So that only peace actually comes from inside of ourselves. That it's not connected to to what's happening around. And that and that that I think this film really kind of shows that. The Matt's Movie Reviews podcast is brought to you by 80s Tees. 80s Tees is an online retailer of licensed T-shirts and pop culture gear from your favorite movies, TV shows, cartoons, video games, comic books, and musicians. Celebrate your inner 80s nerd and click on the link in the show notes below to get the raddest retro t-shirts delivered to your door. The Matt's Movie Reviews podcast is brought to you by Loot Crate. Founded in 2012, Loot Crate is the worldwide leader in fan subscription boxes. Loot Crate partners with industry leaders in entertainment, gaming, sports, and pop culture to deliver monthly themed crates, produce interactive experiences in digital content and film original video productions. No matter what you geek out about, Loot Crate has a subscription box for you. To get your very own exclusive collectibles, apparel and gear delivered to your door, be sure to click on the link in the show notes below. The Matt's Movie Reviews Podcast is brought to you by TeePublic. TeePublic is the world's largest marketplace for independent creators to sell their work on the highest quality merchandise. With over 1.2 million designs, TeePublic is sure to have something you will love. 
It does. And it also shows another interesting thing in that it talks about what is a saint. Um, I think people, when they hear the word saint, they think of something, maybe a, a figure on a pedestal, a pious figure, um, which is exactly the opposite many times. Um, I myself uh, raising my kids um, in my church, a Catholic church, and I do this through different kind of resources. I have um, uh, comic books called the, the um, Saints Chronicles, and it goes through the lives of saints. And so I've got five volumes of it. And something, themes that crop up over and over again in the stories of these saints, and indeed in the, in the story of Saint uh, Nectarios, is, is the sacrifice, the humility. And also, I think, uh, when regard, especially in regards to um, Saint Nectarios, is his not only his need, but his his approach approachability towards those who are poor and destitute. He's not yes. afraid to get down and dirty. He's not afraid to be the one who would give the janitor a break and and clean the toilets. He's not afraid to give his shoes to to a homeless man who doesn't have it. I think that is something that people miss out from the lives of saints. Um, you know, of course, there's things in regards to miracles and the faith in it that, of course, are very important, but I don't think you reach that level until you, until you humble yourself, not only before before God, but before those around you. I think that's a, it's an important message as well in the film. Yes, that, that's correct. That's correct. I mean, the, 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 um, in order to get closer to, to God, uh, to the source of our life, uh, we have to humble ourselves. I mean, that's uh, that's something that, and and to to as you say, do miracles. That that's only God does miracles, but but He does it obviously as a response to a pure heart and mm. a pure soul. So um, absolutely, Saint Nectarius was like all the other saints, extremely uh, compassionate, and he really um, cared for people. That was one of one of the things with him. He was always willing to sacrifice for anybody. Uh, and um, interestingly enough, I think that's uh, that was something that also <laughs> caused uh, the people that, that were not on that path, that maybe uh, were in the position of the church, but uh, which every, whether you're in the Orthodox church, Catholic church, or any other church, you, you're going to all run into the same issues sometimes that yes. There are people. They're they're truly they're, they live by what they preach, and they're wonderful people, and they're they're uh, true shepherds of the of their flock. And there are people that unfortunately maybe they've started out uh, with good intentions, but because of the uh, power and greed, they they forget uh, you know why they're there in the first place, and 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 it's and it, be, it can be very damaging for. Uh, for for people uh, who I, I believe need God and need uh, faith in their life, so uh, a lot of the times that's that's when ego comes into equation, isn't it? And that's something that um, uh, Nectarios did not have whatsoever any type of ego. Um, he refused to kind of be um, to be propped up in any way, um, no matter uh -huh. how many people t told him so. And I think that was a great great part of the movie too. I want to talk about the casting of the film. Um, so to play a role like like Saint Nectarius, I, I think you, you really needed to find an, an actor that had a certain certain weight, but that can hold that weight even during the silences. Um, and I think you really found it in Ardis Servitalis. I think he was terrific in the role, um, especially he had to play the role over uh, um, the, with a character ages over a number of years and. And, and such. I think it's just fantastic casting. How do you come across finding artists uh, for for the role? And then, uh, and did you know much about Saint Nectarius um, beforehand? You know, uh, Story Iris is an incredible actor. You know, he he in Greece he is considered one of the best actors of his generation. And what's what's interesting, but for me, for this role, um, I've I've had a I was blessed to work with a lot of amazing actors, great talent, uh, and I'm. Because my background is from theater, I, I enjoy working with actors. I'm an actress director, but uh, so therefore, very important thing to me was to find um, actors that not only are great actors, but they have the aura and charisma to play the parts. Uh, in case of Saint Nectarius, that was really important. I needed somebody who, even if you know, who had a body language, who even if he didn't say a word, you would believe that he could be a priest or saint. So um, I, I found that in him, you know, he, he's somebody who, um, 
basically, interestingly enough, he was he was a star, uh, famous actor for a long time, and uh, but he wasn't a, a believer at the beginning. And and what happened? This was way before, obviously, I had met him, which was interesting mm-hmm. about him is that he completely turned his life around uh, from complete unbeliever to somebody who became very devout. And uh, I think this was uh, this lasted this this uh, for a while. Uh, his uh, connection to the church and and really working on himself and 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 going to monasteries and praying. So I think uh, he was a perfect person all around to to play this role. And I think that was uh, that was amazing. I had met him actually. I was introduced to him. Uh, by the monks from Mount Athos because he's, he was uh, friends with one of the monks from a uh, monastery of Vatopedi. That's the name of the monastery who actually also, the monastery helped uh, the elder there, Elder Ephraim helped uh, uh, put this film together as well on many levels. And without him, this wouldn't have happened, which is another thing. Uh, it's amazing how this whole thing unfolded. So, so many things regarding this film were use the word miracle maybe i don't know but they were they were really uh i would say meant to be it, it wasn't uh, my will it wasn't something that i was able to put together uh but it just happened in in a very interesting way and and how i met iris and how the film uh got financed and how uh then even even uh, when film was finished um the first uh, screening of the film was in Mount Athos, believe mm. it or not. I thought, I thought the elder is going to watch it by himself because I, I wanted him to see it because he's the one who, who helped the film, who really believed in this. And then my husband, when he was there, he called me and said, you know, there's 150 monks will watch your movie tonight. I was, <laughs> I was shocked because, you know, it was such a big responsibility. It's a Greek Orthodox saint is beloved here in Greece and, I thought, oh, now I'm gonna. Even, it, this is gonna be a moment of of, re, of of reality for me if if I have done anything good or I didn't, you know. So so luckily they really loved it and they they really an elder was really happy. So so that was um, yeah. So that was something that that uh, some a big stone had fell, fallen off my chest. So after that it was easier, you know, to. I really didn't. Again, I made it for people. I mean, it was important for me to pe- for people to. Um, to like this film, the same way as Saint Nectarius was a priest of, of people. Another person that's in the film, um, in a very small but vital role, is none other than Mickey Rourke. And a lot <laughs> of people don't know this, but Mickey Rourke is actually a very religious man. I've yeah. I've read interviews with him where he talks about whenever he's back in um, he's you know, I think it's um when he's back in New York City, he has a priest mm-hmm. there, and they just sit together mm-hmm. and they have a bottle of wine and. Mm-hmm. They kind of just talk about things. And he also played Francis of Assisi in a movie as well um, back, I think it was like late 80s, early 90s. And yes. so he's he's got kind of like a background in that. When you get, find a way to approach Mickey Rourke to be in a film, is the fact that the film is a movie about a saint, about a holy man, um, is that something that really would have piqued his interest? Because just looking at his filmography of late, usually he does action films and crime I'm sure this has been a, a really breath of fresh air for him, considering that he does have a, a keen interest, interest in the, the subject of, of Christianity for he himself is, is a practicing Christian. Yes, that's 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 true. That's correct. Uh, when I, um, you know, because because we did this film in English, I always felt that the uh, film has an international appeal uh, because of the subject matter. And I, uh, and we decided to make it in English for international audience. And naturally, you you know, when you do that, you need a couple of actors that that they're that that would be called have a name that people know about them. So I thought of Mickey Rourke for the for the role of paralyzed man uh, for for a couple of reasons. One of the reasons definitely was that I knew that Mickey Rourke was very devout and faith was something that was very important to him. Uh, and also the fact that he is such a great uh, actor. I had watched him uh, a long time ago. I was at the premiere of the film called The Pledge. It's great a film movie. that Sean, Sean Penn directed, that Jack Nicholson played the lead. Mickey had one scene in that movie. Yeah. I don't know if you remember. Yes. But that scene was so powerful that I was the whole time, I couldn't even, like, I couldn't believe what I saw, you know. And, and, and between all, and it always stuck with me. Uh, that incredibly heart wrenching, you know, like like 
like really uh, incredible performance, basically. He's, he's an amazing actor. So knowing that he's very devout, uh, that, um, and, that, and that, that, and, and knowing that, and I needed a character who, who, you know, who is troubled, who, who knows what the pain is, who has depth, who, you know, has a lot of heart. So he, he was perfect in my mind for that role. As you know, it's not a big role, but it's a very significant role in the movie. And, and, uh, and I, uh, I, I try reaching out to him. So after a while, I was able to get hold of him. And because it is the film about faith and, and, and uh, saints and suffering and all that, he, he was willing to, he was happy to do it. He identified with the role, number one, and, and he was happy to, to participate in the film. And I'm very grateful for that. Yeah, it's a, it's a great, like, it's a small amount of screen time, but it's definitely a, a screen time that has a certain weight to it. And and you're correct, like, The Pledge is one of my favourite movies, and I think his brief moment in that film, I think that really was the film that kind of re-kind of kindled his career again um, at that time. I think uh, that film came out in the early 2000s, and he was pretty much wasn't working that much at that point. But yes. it's a terrific performance, and he's one of those actors can, that can really, you know, you can call him out and then he can hit a home run with just one swing and um, he does it in your film as well. Um, my final question here, um, you know, myself as a Christian, I have a, a spiritual journey like like many people do and, you know, I'm a lover of film as well and I usually find that movies, certain movies can be part of that spiritual journey, um, you know, whether it be, say, something like The Passion of the Christ or even something like The Exorcist, they, they all have a certain powerful relevance to me. But when it comes to yourself, Yelena, as a filmmaker, when you make a movie like Man of God, what does that do to you in regards of a spiritual context? Do you look at your relationship with, say, uh, religion or God different in the process of making the film and then afterwards? Is, was there kind of like a, a, a moment for you in the making of this film that really kind of uh, had a, a, a moment of a levity? Um, that maybe another film would not have? Well, uh, I this was very close to my heart uh, for the reasons of having faith and, and other reasons that I mentioned. And this is something that it was very personal to me. Uh, I definitely have experienced, you know, I've, you know, experienced uh, incredible things while making this film. I mean, I, I've decided to put one miracle in a film, but I can say that I, we, we have experienced a lot more on the set and while making it. So uh, the, the, what I can say, uh, yes, uh, I always had a strong faith. It's something that I, I simply, I, it's, it's, it's my life basically, you know, it's, it's like, as if you ask somebody, why do you drink water? Well, you know, that's, I need to live. And that, that, that's why I, I cling to my faith since I know for myself. So I, um, I must say that this film, uh, after making this film, because we had a lot of obstacles, not only that we did it during the pandemic, but, you know, uh, being an independent filmmaker and all of that. And now you're, you're dealing with a subject uh, that touches upon religion and faith. Uh, I, First of all, you know, the St. Nectarius has played a big role in my life. I feel like, like I have a, a protector and I can feel that. I feel, I feel uh, that he's around and, and that he has helped me with this. And also I, I can say that through all this challenge and trouble that we have gone through, because it was very difficult to pull this together, but it happened though. That, 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 that's what's that's the beauty about it. Uh, it was a fight, but it happened. So it's almost like, in a, in a spiritual, um, uh, on the spiritual path, as you know yourself, you're, you're, you're kind of a, you're like a, like a soldier, you know, in order to, to uh, gain that peace that uh, Christ says, I'm, I'm leaving you the peace that is not of this world. Mm -hmm. uh, in the world, you'll have tribulation, but don't worry, I overcame the world, I'll give you the peace. And that's some kind, and, 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 and one can understand only if it experiences. And I know what I'm talking about. I've, I've experienced it before, maybe here and there, but after making this film, I must say, uh, I don't know if this is a reward for, for, for really honestly uh, throwing myself in the battle and sacrificing everything I had to make this happen or what, but I've gained that kind of underlining piece that I wasn't aware of before inside of myself. And, 
and it feels good. You know, it feels good just to like, I, I don't have any desires or, or, or wishes. I just feel good that I am. So I, it's, it's interesting. I can't, I can't really explain that, but, but it definitely, it has, it has brought a new layer to my spiritual life after making this book. So for everyone, listen in June 2nd and select the strange cinemas is Man of God. You can go to movieschangepeople.com to find more information, find out where the movie is screening near you. I really highly recommend everyone watch this film. I, I think, uh, Yelena, you did a great job here. I really do. This is your second feature as a director. Um, you took on a, a subject um, that has like really weighty themes to it and you really did great work with it and um, I can't wait for other people to watch this film as well and I can't wait to get my review out there which should be very soon and um, I thank you so much for your time today and hopefully we can talk again in the future it's been a pleasure talking to you and um, congratulations with the movie thank you so much thank you for having me and uh, thank you for your kind words thank you for watching the Matt's movie reviews channel please subscribe for more reviews podcast interviews and exclusive content also, if you would like to request a review and support my work, please join my Patreon via the link in the description below.